Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for yet another bite size talk on this Tuesday. We'd like to begin by thanking our funders, the Trans Zuckerberg Initiative, for supporting all NFCO events. So a few um, some few details is the talk will be recorded and is currently being recorded, and the video will be shared on our YouTube platform and shared on Slack as well. So for today we'll have uh, as usual a five, five, around 15 minute talk and then it will be followed by a question and answer section where you are free to post your questions on the chat box or unmute yourself and ask your question to the speaker. Um, today we are glad to have with us Maxim Garcia who is a bioinformatician at the Science for Life Laboratory at the Karolinska Institute in Sweden and he'll be discussing or talking to us about DSL2, which is a syntax extension that implements the definition of module libraries and also a better way of writing more complex data analysis pipelines using Nextflow. So, Maxim, over to you. Uh, thanks a lot, Simeon. So, hi everyone, uh, Maxim here. So, uh, today I'm going to talk to you about like the new, uh, the update that we have on the new DSL2 syntax, especially for the modules. So, brief overview about what I'm going to talk about, what's new, what can be done, and what should be done. So, yes, first let's begin with a disclaimer. So, this is my own uh, takes on the new syntax. Like other developers might have some other idea. And I think the best thing about like uh, NFR is that we are a community. So yes, of course, there are like some uh, driver forces like such as Archil or Mesh that try like to do stuff and that are like uh, having a lot of idea and stuff. But what I like is that everyone has their own voice and everyone might say and might improve everything, even like uh, me. So, and... Uh, of course, because we are all doing this as a community, the syntax and or the logic will definitely evolve. So I think this is just like the current state of the new DSN2 syntax. And what we want to do, I think, is we want to forge the best practices for all that. So yes, I will just show you what I'm doing right now and, uh, and let's discuss at the end to see where this is going. So what is new in the new uh, DSL2 uh, syntax for the module? So basically now the module are fully self-contained. We don't need any function.nf anymore. And we don't need to add the params whenever we call like a module with some uh, sub workflow. And all of the logic uh, when calling like a module or a sub workflow uh, can be done with using the new uh, task.ext directives. Uh, so we can set up like a different argument. We can set up the prefix uh, for the for the file name, and we can set up we can use the when directive to set up when uh, and if a particular like uh, module should be run or not. And of course, this task dot x directive are now used with uh, with name selector in the module dot uh, config. So instead of uh, using a, a, a huge params.map, now we just have a with name selectors. So it's completely like a brand new world. We can do almost like everything. And I think that's the main issue with that because we can literally do almost everything. And uh, with that, I think the thing that we really need to, to figure out is like to make good closures to decide like uh, how to use the uh, args, the argument when we have several or just one, like we can use closure like to decide that. We can use closure also to, to design like the prefix and we can use uh, closure to decide when to run the module. But I, apart, the main issue is that there is some downside. So we've got this whole new syntax for the module that allow us the usage of the task.x directive. Uh, so that means that the logic can go into the config. So the main issue is that now we have the logic in the workflow, in the sub workflow, and also in the config. And that can be like completely messy. And uh, I think that that can be like super bad. So I think what should be done is that we should be super like careful whenever we are setting up like uh, task.args 
uh, especially because for the argument, if we are setting that up in the config, then we must we we must be like very certain uh, to explain how it's happening and where and why and everything. So I advise like to everyone to write command to explain the whole logic of that because first it will be good for future you because you will forget about it. I know I already did some stuff, so the comments are already helping me, and I just started last week. So definitely, it's good for everyone, and it's good also for other developers because, as I said earlier, we are part of a community, and we are not coding only for ourselves; we're coding for everyone. So it's good for everyone, and I think comments is always like a good practice. So now I think it's time like to have some examples. So I will begin like example with Sarah because uh, I just like finished a PR that we merged with Frederike like uh, last week. And I think we are now the leading uh, like pipeline with all of the, this recent development. So now if I look at the prepare uh, underscore genome like sub workflow, which will prepare like the indices that we need and will uh, prepare like some other files that we need uh, before launching the, the whole pipeline. It's now uh, super simple. I just like launch all the tools and that's all. Uh, the whole logic uh, behind all that will be in the, in the config file. So as we can see, like the, the, the sub workflow is super simple. It looks super clear. It looks amazing. And I'm like super happy with that. So which is why I think we need to be super careful and we need to command. Here, for example, I commented, I said that, uh, yes, this will be run if uh, the aligner is BWMM and this one is uh, run if the aligner is BWMM2. Of course, I added like some specific information here in the, in the beginning of the file to set that for all modules here, a when clause condition is defined in the module.config to determine if the module should be run. And here I explained like how the condition is defined and uh, extra command to say like if there is an extra condition, then it's specified in command, which is why I just explained here. So now let's just have a look at the module.config uh, regarding to that. So for example, if here with BWMM1, so uh, here this is the published here like a directive that will uh, figure out how to uh, publish the file, how to save the file, if we want to save the file or not. And we can direct, we can do all that uh, within the module. So we don't have, we, within the configuration. So we don't have to take care of that anywhere else. And that's so simple. So for example, here in this case, we will save uh, these files only if we specify the save reference par params uh, using the publish dish more, uh, publish dear mod and with this specific path and the specific pattern. And we will run this, this uh, process only if uh, we have the parameter, the aligner, which is BWLWA mem, only if we don't have the BWLWA uh, params. So that means that we don't have any BWLWA like uh, indices that are provided to the pipeline. And only if we start if we start the pipeline with the mapping step. If we start the pipeline with a later step, for example, if we start the pipeline with variant calling, then we don't need to have the BWLWA indices. So we don't need to run this one. Similar for the BWLWA mem2 uh, process, we only run it if we have the BWLWA mem2 and it's so on for all of the other like uh, process here in this pipeline. So here um, <clears throat> for the for the indices and the preparation of the indices and all the other tools, it's fairly simple. I just use like some uh, condition uh, within like this closure to decide uh, why it should be run uh, and uh, how and why and uh, if and not. Maxime, sorry to interrupt. Um, somebody asked yes. if you can increase increase the font size a little bit, and maybe. Oh yes, of course. Sorry. <laughs> like that, I think it should be better then. Yeah, looks good to me. Yes. Uh, okay, so then let's see something a tiny bit more complicated then. So here we will be looking at the mapping. Uh, 
the mappings of workflows that we use in uh, in Sarek, and that I hope like to publish one day in the NF Core repo so that it can be used by other uh, pipeline as well. So this uh, workflow has been like uh, refactored like several times by uh, Frederic and I, and uh, I'm pretty sure like we have other people that are like looking into that as well, and that we will like improve that again. But I'm always happy for that, so I think it's good. So here it's the same. Uh, in the Sarek uh, workflow, we have the whole logic that uh, decide if this sub workflow is one or not. So I will not show that, but I will just show here inside the workflow or we, inside the sub workflow how it goes. So basically, we, we, with the with this like uh, task.x directive, we can really like set up the whole logic inside the the config file, and so the pipeline itself like is uh, much more simpler and here we run like just uh value mem1 mem or value mem2 mem on the input file with the indices and uh, we set up true because we want the output file to be sorted here we just gathering like the the band file outside and we are remapping and uh, we don't want to start the workflow, but that's like that's an extra step. And in the end, that's all. We uh, so only if this clause is true, we will merge all the BAM file, and we will only do that if we want to skip the mark duplicate. So it's all explained here in the command. Only if we want to skip mark duplicate, or only if we want to save the BAM file. So only in this step, we will merge the BAM file and we will index them. And then, of course, we gather all the version. So here we have the, all the modules that are called here, and the whole logic will happen again in the in the workflow, in the config file. So uh, up here, for here we see that uh, similarly to what we done with uh, the indices, uh, we run this BWA mem only if we have the paramaliner BWA mem for BWA mem two. It's only if we have the parent aligner, which is BWA with MEM2. We can see is that we set up a particular argument uh, depending on the meta map. So in our case, in Sarek, uh, we have a specific like, uh, uh, a specific like handicap if we have like some uh, a tumor sample. So if our status is one, meaning it's a tumor, then we have like this particular like uh, value. Otherwise, it's the regular like uh, 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 parameters that we use. And then similarly, uh, we have a particular like prefix that we use only uh, if we have uh, if we have some uh, some split fastq if we split the file like at the beginning. And then as we as, as I explained with the merge and the mapping, we only do that, as I said before, when we save the BAM file, the mapped BAM file, or when we skip my duplicate. And that's all. So I think this whole like, uh, this whole idea about like improving this whole like, uh, uh, about this poll syntax uh, really like allow us like to to go to make the sub workflow like easier to read but in the in the meantime we really have like to push everything like into the command and to explain all that and i think okay i made the bad copy paste here because this is exactly the same so let's see like one uh, more complicated like sub workflow and I think that will be my last, ex my last example for today. So here, this will be like the marking duplicate sub workflow, which can be skipped as I explained earlier. So here as an input, we take like uh, the BAM map, uh, which contain like the meta map plus the BAM, the BAM file or uh, the BAM index, we can, which contain like the meta map plus the BAM and the index. And we only have one of those depending if we are skipping my du mark duplicate or not. So in, in our case, uh, oh, we can have both of them because it's an optional like channel, but let's feel, let, let, 
it doesn't really matter here. Here, in this case, I will run like a SAM tool on the BAM file to convert like the BAM file to CRAM like uh, when we have like no duplicate, which is why like I have this uh, like huge name for the for the for the module, and this will only be run when we have like uh, when we are skipping mark duplicate. Otherwise, uh, when we are running mark duplicate, if we are running uh, mark duplicate with Spark, we will run that. Uh, if uh, we want to to have like some, uh, if we want to have some uh, oh, some uh, quality control tool uh, run out of uh, run out of uh, mark duplicate, then the output of mark duplicate will be uh, bam. Otherwise, it's scram. And if we have a BAM, then we will convert the BAM uh, to CRAM because we want to use CRAM in our pipeline. So that part is like slightly difficult to understand, which is why like I try like to comment everything, and which is why like I try to put like extra command in the in the in the config as well. If we are not running like uh, Spark, but running Mark Duplicate, then we are running like the regular module for that, which is the JTK for Mark Duplicate. Then we are converting the BAM file to CRAM. And then in the end, this channel, uh, CRAM Mark Duplicate, will contain only uh, one of the following channel, because we only have like one solution. Either we are skipping Mark Duplicate, either we are running Mark Duplicate Spark with the BAM output, or running mark duplicate Spark with the CRAM output, or running the regular mark duplicate, and which is just one of these solutions. So in the end, if we are uh, running mark duplicate Spark and the report on the BAM file, then it runs this one. And otherwise, we run like the we run the, the report on the mark duplicate BAM output or input. And otherwise, we do some tool stat on the CRAM file, and that's all. So as we can see, like in the in the workflow, in the sub workflow, it's a bit complicated, but it looks clear to read, and I think that makes it like easier to understand, even if the logic is a bit like fuzzy. Uh, which is why we have everything here in the module. So here in the module, same like similarly, we will have like the prefix that will explain what is the output file should look like, and we have a proper like uh, when uh, like directive that will uh, that will uh, explain to us how to run it and uh, why and where. Yep. Sorry. And this is all. This is all explained there. And here we have that for all of the process that we have there. I think what can be done here to improve will be like actually to sort out all of the with name like selectors. And I think that was like a good uh, idea like to uh, first like sort out the select group the selectors by sub workflow. But I think maybe like sorting out the selectors will be good. I'm still thinking about if we should sort them like alphabetically or if we should sort them in the order that they are in the in the sub workflow. I think that is like a different solution. I'm not sure what to do there. Uh, of course, what you can do as well with the name selector, you can group several workflow together, several uh, modules together, which can lead like to extra uh, issue because you might not notice that you're defining twice the same like ext uh, suffix or ext when. So you need to be really careful when you're defining like several like uh, module uh, at once. And I think, yes, okay. I think that was all for my examples. So I think I would just want to thank like all of my uh, institute and all of the institute I'm working with and for and everyone that helped us with Sarek. Uh, all of the institutes that are part of uh, NFCore and all of the people that are contributing uh, to NFCore. 
Uh, if you need help, I will recommend to watch like the whole bite size, even if they are not up to date. Otherwise, you know where to join us on Slack or on Twitter and everything. And now I'm open for questions. And I think uh, I saw like there was some uh, raised hands already. Yeah, I think Moritz, Moritz has a question. Right. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for the introduction here. Um, I didn't follow all the discussions on, on Slack and, and GitHub. Can you say why this, um, when syntax and in the config was chosen? Because what I saw now was that mostly in your configs, you were referring to global parameters. And then in the sub workflow, you basically you had a comment of the condition. So to me, it is much more obvious to put in the sub workflow an if statement with those global parameters, because then the logic uh, is right there to, to read. And, and uh, it kind of hides away that logic in, uh, and makes it more difficult in, in my opinion, but I, I haven't read the whole discussion around it. No, uh, I think I agree with you that it may, that it hides away the, the logic. Definitely, the logic is a bit hidden away. But uh, I think I think it's a good way to go because for me it will be like much easier like to control the stuff how it works, and it will be much easier to make like some sub module or sub workflow. I mean that will be easily shareable between like different pipelines. Which I think is something that I will really like, like to, uh, to advance at the NFCore like uh, level, because for now uh, what we are doing is that we are getting like good at having like uh, sub workflows that are like looking good. I'm thinking like for example we have a good like. Uh, Tringal or FastQC sub workflow, but that is mainly just copied like over from one uh, pipeline to another. And uh, I think it will be very good if we can do that. And I agree, the logic is hidden, but I think if we explain it well uh, with comments, uh, it will be it will be like good. And you don't need actually like to use the if logic. I think the if logic or the whole logic with the when prefix. Uh, can be decided in the in the config or not. I think that's something that you can decide like for yourself in your own pipeline or in your own sub workflow. So for me, uh, adding like this when uh, like directives to the module uh, give us the possibility to do more stuff. And I think the problem with that, yes, it can be good or bad depending on what we do with it. I hope I reply to your uh, question quite. Yes, thank you. Um, also, Frederick asks whether dividing the configs per sub workflow can reduce size and increase. Ah, uh, yes. I would, I think, uh, like having uh, just a simple config file for each sub workflow could be like easier. And we could even have like the config file sitting in the same folder as a sub workflow. That's something that we can decide or not. I think that's what I said earlier. Like we need to decide like what are the best practice and how to enforce that and how to, what to do, how to follow, and how to go on with that. Yeah. I don't know if there's anyone who has another question. So apparently there's no one else who has a question. Okay, then no problem. I'm pretty sure we will have like more questions on Slack <laughs> like, uh, as soon as more people have seen that. And as soon as more people realize what we can do with that, because definitely, Yes, uh, this new like uh, syntax like can be very helpful or could be very like uh, dangerous depending on what you want to do, especially with this new like uh, usage of the when directive. Yeah, but maybe like even if you develop a standard uh, syntax for the normal uh, processes modules like quality control and trimming, then they can literally be applied to everywhere. Mm -hmm. People don't have a problem with it. Okay, so thank you guys for joining. Uh, we'll see you next week for another basis. Talk.